It's National Children's Dental Health Month, and as parents, we know we should be taking our children to the dentist a couple times a year. However, there are a lot of issues that kids are experiencing beyond this. Like 20% of two-year-olds already have tooth decay, and one in three three-year-olds have it as well. So what's happening to our kids teeth and to give us advice i'm here with dr susan maples a dentist and author of the book brave parent raising healthy happy kids against all odds in today's world 20 percent of two-year-olds and one-third of all three-year-olds in our country is tooth decay which is why the american dental association and the american medical associations and pediatric associations are all saying under one year is when we need to be seeing kids it turns out that there, the mouth is a home to several hundred bacteria. A couple of them are significant acid producers. One of them in particular called strep mutans, rampant in our society. It's transmissible from saliva, from caregivers to babies. We literally give it to them through our spit. Now, our, our body is a home to, oh my gosh, 11 microbes per human cell and we want more diverse more diverse the more diverse the bugs the better but in the mouth when we get an overgrowth of the strep mutans it literally eats whatever sugar it gets produces acid and we can prevent that transmissibility if we talk to caregivers about not swapping spit with babies the window of opportunity is considered for them to really take a stronghold in your mouth um, between six months before the eruption of the first molars and three and a half years old is what we're thinking. But in any event, we also need to considerably ratchet down the sugar, which is what these bugs eat. They love it and they flourish and they produce acid. So yes, it is uh, preventable. We also need to look at fluoride. I know fluoride gets a bad rap on some counts, but there's nothing better to incorporate in the teeth to make stronger teeth for babies. And we get it through our drinking water. If you live in, in a, the country and drink out of a well and have it tested, so there's no fluoride, you need a supplement um, to get your kids' teeth stronger. During the, um, it onboards the fluoride into the enamel structure as the teeth are forming. After that, the fluoride applications help strengthen the outside of the enamel. So those are things that we can do to help prevent. Things really do change over time, too, because I remember when my son was young, they talked about giving him juice, but watering it down a little bit. Do we even look at juice at all anymore? Juice is really interesting because our number one nutrient deficiency of all of all nutrients is fiber. Fiber is um, what mitigates the, the sugar getting into the bloodstream and and helps with our insulin sensitivity. Insulin um, is, you know, of course, uh, insulin resistance is the precursor to diabetes and diabetes is out of control. In 2012, when my son graduated high school, we had 16 million diabetics in this country, which seemed unfathomable. And now it's 37.3 in just a decade, it's craziness. So it's projected by 2050, we'll have one in three of us will be diabetic. Wow. Um, based on the fact that half of us currently are insulin resistant. So when you take juice or any fruit and squeeze the juice out of it and throw the fiber and the micronutrients away and just drink the juice, it's certainly not as healthful. And then it's very, um, you know, it's addictive for kids to get anything cold and sweet we our brains start to prefer something cold and sweet so a juice um, thirst quencher ends up to be um, a fruit drink a sports drink a soda pop a, an energy drink and we see it just go from there so really just put the whole fruit on the table cut up the apple don't squeeze the apple juice out and throw the good part away this is an important message for everyone